Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is Pewdiepie. No, no, I don't want to. I don't want to be famous. Uh, but sure, I, I can be on Mission in my life. Why not? I think it's. A good Disney movie. has dropped one of YouTube's most popular stars, Pewdiepie, over anti-Semitic jokes. In one of his now deleted clips, two men held up a sign reading "Death to all Jews." The Wall Street Journal launched an investigation into the 27-year-old Swedish comedian, real name Felix Shellberg. It found nine videos on his channel dating back to August that had anti-Semitic jokes or showed Nazi imagery. YouTube has also canceled his original series. He has more than 53 million subscribers on the site. I think there's going to be a lot of eyes on me during this video, so I'm going to address this as if I'm talking publicly and not directly to my audience, which is how I normally would do it. Hello, my name is Felix Schellberg, but you probably know me as PewDiePie. I've been making videos on YouTube for about the last six years. It's been a hobby that uh, I've been fortunate enough to have as my job for most of that time. I make a substantial living from doing YouTube videos. And the reason why you know this is because that's all the media has ever acknowledged me for. Besides from from now. <laughs> I bought a bunch of billboards. I uh, do. we got the double billboard. We don't mess around. Grab your phone, go on YouTube, search PewDiePie, and subscribe to him. There comes a time in everybody's life when you have to realize what truly, honestly is important. See the true purpose of your life and know that this, right now, is the one true calling of your entire existence. This day, more than any other. There might be no coming back from this. If you don't go in the description and you don't click on that link and you don't subscribe to PewDiePie right now, there will be no coming back. Like I said, I'm gonna miss you. This half a year since I started making videos have been so much fun uh, and so much happiness have come out of it. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so glad that I got to share it with so many people. Felix Arvin Ulf Schellberger, now better known as PewDiePie, was born on October 24th, 1989 in Gothenburg, Sweden. How's it going, bros? My name is PewDiePie, and today is my birthday. Uh, look, my leg. Have you ever seen my leg before in my video? There you go. There's my foot. He was the second child in his family, as his mother and father, Johanna and Ulf Schellberg, had given birth to his older sister, Fanny, in 1987. And today... I'm here with these two lovely ladies. Sister. Sister Pierce. <laughs> Growing up in Gothenburg, he attended a private elementary school and would draw video game characters like Mario and Sonic in his free time. Felix, as I'm sure you can imagine, was also always a gamer and would regularly skip his high school classes to go out to internet cafes. In an interview with Rolling Stones, Felix has stated in the past that Sweden has a great culture around gaming and he loved every second of it. For most of us, playing video games is an outlet to vent and escape from the real world and for Felix or PewDiePie, that was no exception. During his high school years, the young Pewds became heavily, heavily introverted and was more so a loner. Like before YouTube, I was that weird kid with no friends, and then all of a sudden, there's so many people that enjoy what I do. It's it's pretty insane. But I remember there was a time in my life where I'm like, I actually don't have any friends. <laughs> Is anyone surprised? I uh, didn't really care about interacting with uh, that much in school. I just wanted to go home, play video games. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. This is the school I, I went to. It's called Lila Sam School. In 2006, at the age of 17, Felix launched his very first YouTube gaming channel under the surname of PewDie. Pew being slang for a gun firing and die being, well, uh, die. Pew, Pew die. And I would yell out PewDiePie whenever I did well in games and people would just laugh, and I just got, went with it. The Call of Duty channel didn't last long though, as he quickly lost interest in making content, and also, he forgot his channel password. That's the yikes for me. Once Felix graduated high school, he took an interest in Photoshop art, and his parents would urge him to go to a university. When applying for university, Felix almost sent an application to a creative course, one that would be more suitable for his passions, but he doubted his scores would be high enough, so he just went for one of the easy classes. Turns out, grade-wise, Felix actually was on point, but he had already applied for a technology management degree, so there was no turning back. If Felix had decided to apply for that creative course, we might have never had the opportunity to see the growth of, well, PewDiePie. 100 man! 
And hence, the future PewDiePie would eventually attend Chalmers University of Technology with a degree in Industrial Economics and Technology Management. Felix despised every second of it and desperately needed an outlet to express his creativity. During this period of his life, Felix continued to master his art of Photoshop and he was able to sell enough prints to buy himself a brand new PC for gaming and making videos on YouTube under a new surname, PewDiePie. This is my apartment. It's really luxurious for my standard at least. I can barely afford uh, to pay the rent. Uh, and you know, if I show my computer and all that, you're probably gonna think, oh man, this guy, guys is rich. He's got a lot of money. But truth be told, I am, I basically spent all my money on this baby right here. I paid for this computer basically by doing artwork in Photoshop. I used my tablet. And that's when in April of 2010, the PewDiePie channel was born. How's it going everyone? My name is PewDiePie. Over time, Felix would grow his channel one subscriber by one subscriber, attempting to just have something going for his life outside of university. And yeah, today we're gonna celebrate because I got 100 subscribers. Oh my lord, 100 subscribers? <laughs> Pew, 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 pew. To me, it means a lot. So uh, I just want to thank you guys so much. Um, no, no, I don't want to. I don't want to be famous. Uh, but sh sure, I, I can be on Machinima. Like, why not? I think it's a good goal for me to aim for. Over time, Felix began to ditch university altogether and lied to his parents about his grades so that he continued living in a flat on his own. Though, as PewDiePie grew his channel, the truth did come out, and he was forced to get a real job and move back in with his parents. And that's when Felix dropped out of university for good. It was boring, all right? It was f***ing boring. Is that a big surprise for everyone? Allegedly, his mother and father, who were both highly successful and educated individuals, doubted Felix could get any kind of sustainable job that he was happy with outside of getting a degree first. But they were quickly proved wrong, as Felix took up the very first job that he was accepted for, selling hot dogs on a street corner in Sweden. And a lot of people like to take this story as something negative, or like, oh, he did that, or now look at him making big bucks. I was the happiest I was at that time because I was finally, for the first time in many, many years, doing what I wanted to do. And the fact that I could make videos was so much more important to me that I had to spend a few hours a day doing a job that wasn't that prestigious. Over the next few months, Felix continued to perfect his hot dog and Photoshop skills and even applied for a position through an art contest. Unfortunately though, he was the second choice and was turned down from the artist position, which in hindsight was probably a good thing as it allowed Felix to spend more time on his YouTube channel. A few months would pass and both PewDiePie's channel and on-camera presence would grow in popularity. At that time, there were many different niches striving on YouTube, but there wasn't a big market in gaming and Felix, he wanted to close that. Yeah. Felix started to upload Let's Play videos of him playing Amnesia, and that's when things really began to take off for the pews. How's it going, bro? He continued to upload daily Let's Play videos to his channel, and that's when Marzia, an 18-year-old from Italy, was introduced to one of the videos from a friend. Marzia thought Felix's videos were funny, and she sent him a DM about that. I wrote, you're awesome, I love your vids. And uh, soon after, they began dating in the fall of 2011, and in October, when she turned 19, Marzia left Italy to move in with Felix in Sweden, who had just moved out into a small apartment. They later moved to Italy to be closer to family, though settled in Brighton, England a few years later. The two adopted their very first pug, Maya, around this time, and began vlogging their adventures in Sweden. Hello, hello, what's up? <laughs> no! Oh, it's pretty. Even though it's kind of graying today, it's still nice. I like her. Marzia could only roughly speak English, and Felix, well, he couldn't speak Italian, but somehow they made it work. By July 2012, Felix had reached his very first million subscribers and was on track to YouTube world domination, one bro fist at a time. See this? This is not a fist pump. This is a bro fist. <laughs> it's easy to get them mixed up. Anyway, are you ready? You ready? <laughs> We're gonna do this in Espanolos. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Cinco, seis, de profestos. PewDiePie's videos were different than others on the platform, and frankly, it felt like you were just hanging out with a friend. And well, it was a breath of fresh air, especially versus all the other traditional playthroughs that were reigning the platform at the time. Although the Burr Army wasn't strong enough, as Felix and Marcia had a really tough time affording their apartment. But with the help of Machinima, the only way to make money at the time from gaming on YouTube, he was able to grow from 100 to 200 million views a month and became somewhat financially stable. And soon after, the Burr Army continued to grow 
grow at an insane, insane rate, surpassing Smosh as the number one most subscribed to channel on YouTube in August of 2013. And by the end of the year, PewDiePie had almost surpassed 19 million subscribers. PewDiePie would then begin uploading up to two videos a day to his channel, each of those videos receiving over a million views. And throughout 2012 and 2013, the PewDiePie channel was the fastest growing channel on YouTube, getting a new subscriber every 1.037 seconds. Things were going well for the Pewds. He left Machinima as frankly they were a horrible MCN to work with and created a brand new MCN of his very own, Revel Mode, which was a subsidiary of Maker Studios, now known as Disney Digital Networks. In 2015, the Pewds diversified his reach by publishing a book titled This Book Loves You, which was a satire and inspirational quotes. Oh, am I signing all of these? Right, <laughs> hey. It's gonna be a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. He also released his very first mobile game, PewDiePie, The Legend of the Brofist. And behind the scenes, him and Marcia continued to build their relationship, becoming one of the longest lasting YouTube couples. PewDiePie had officially become one of YouTube's most successful self-made millionaires. Though he always stayed modest and used his influence to raise millions of dollars for charity as well. Like when Felix raised over $598,000 for a charity water campaign, or when Felix raised over $350,000 for Save the Children. PewDiePie was on top of his game and started appearing on many, many different late night shows. He's the new breed of celebrity bringing social media success into mainstream stardom. Welcome to television. Oh, this is you. this is a uh, a steam powered medium. Cool. That runs on coal that out. your grandparents invented. <laughs> mm -hmm. You've agreed to play a video game with me, and we're going to shoot it for the web. We're going to play. Uh, oh, really? Far Cry. Yeah. Yes. Your people agree to it. And even was named as one of Time's world's most 100 influential people, as well as giving life to the most awkward handshake in existence. Yes. Yes. We started to, that was awful. Uh, we started to. It turned into a high five and it just fell apart. It was, I never want to do that again. But in 2016, Felix was beginning to feel unhappy with only creating gaming content and was faking his reactions for views. Hence, the PewDiePie channel eventually underwent some major, major overhauls, becoming more commentary based with dark, cynical humor. Hey, how's it going, bros? You may find things are a bit different. <laughs> how's it going, bro? My name is PewDiePie. <laughs> How's it going, with My name is Billy. Like, stop, please. He's trying way too hard. Just trying way too hard. I think that's the problem of me. And later that year, alongside YouTube Red, PewDiePie released a brand new series to his channel titled Scare PewDiePie, which quickly became one of the most popular shows on YouTube Red. This is gonna be safe, right? The series was even picked up for a season two, featuring fellow gameplay creator Jacksepticeye. anything to be alarmed with, just sometimes we have people get into restricted areas. Okay. Scare yeah. PewDiePie's concept was simple, yet complex, putting her here PewDiePie in real life alterations of the video games that he played to go viral. PewDiePie would also release his second mobile game, Tuber Simulator, which unlike Legend of the Brofist, is still relevant to this day. Felix was heavily overworked during this period and even took a break from daily videos in November 2016 while producing Scare PewDiePie Season 2. Oh my god, I just unironically sighed before a video. Great. I feel really sad. I really feel down right now. Um, because I did, I, I realized last night that I, I can't keep doing the vlogs. It really, really sucks. I really wanted Bertabo to be something fun and positive and different for the channel. And I think it was the first week. But now it's just gotten to a point where not just me is being affected by it, but like other people around me. Brad and Michael, who came out here to help me with the vlogs, because I was already stressed out before I came here. It's just been so stressful. I'm doing the show, I'm doing the daily vlogs, uh, doing Revel Mode stuff, and it's just, it's just been too much. And, and I can deal with it. Like, it's just another 10 days, right? But, like, even with Marcia, it's like, forced to do all these things. It just feels forced. Brad and Michael, everyone is just stressed out over the vlogs. And I think the fun disappeared somewhere. And it's like, if it's forced and not fun, then what's the point of continuing?
And once Felix had defeated his YouTube burnout, he was back on the YouTube Daily Grind. I'm back, and uh, I feel so much better to be back. PewDiePie also reached 50 million subscribers and famously clickbaited the deletion of his channel. So I've decided the only way to stop my channel from dying. I know you're gonna think I'm joking right now, but I'm gonna delete my channel. Now let's go ahead then and fulfill my end of the promise. That was it. That was the... That was the joke. His new brand of commentary content did land well, but his views were nowhere near what they used to be. And because of that, he continues to push the line of his comedy further and further each and every video. His target demographic loved every second of it, but unfortunately these jokes were quickly taken out of context by the mainstream media. And that's when things really started to go downhill for the Pewds. Disney has dropped one of YouTube's most popular stars, PewDiePie, over anti-Semitic jokes. In one of his now deleted clips, two men held up a sign reading, Death to all Jews. The Wall Street Journal launched an investigation into the 27-year-old Swedish comedian, real name Felix Shelberg. It found nine videos on his channel dating back to August that had anti-Semitic jokes or showed Nazi imagery. YouTube has also canceled his original series. He he has more than 53 million subscribers on the site. On February 14th, 2017, Felix uploaded a video to his channel featuring anti-Semitic jokes, and what started off as a simple fire video became the bane of his existence. The Wall Street Journal broke the story and found multiple unrelated out-of-context clips to paint PewDiePie out as a modern-day Nazi. Anyone who really knew PewDiePie and his content, though, knew he wasn't a Nazi, but to the outside world, he was a monster. I think there's gonna be a lot of eyes on me during this video, so I'm going to address this as if I'm talking publicly and not directly to my audience, which is how I normally would do it. So, hello, my name is Felix Schellberg, but you probably know me as PewDiePie. I've been making videos on YouTube for about the last six years. It's been a hobby that uh, I've been fortunate enough to have as my job for most of that time. As I'm sure a lot of you <laughs> are aware, I make a substantial living from doing YouTube videos. And the reason why you know this is because that's all the media has ever acknowledged me for. Besides from, from now. <laughs> I actually did an interview in 2014 with the Wall Street Journal. I thought, hey, Wall Street Journal, that's a well-respected news outlet. That would be a great way for people to finally hear about my story. And maybe I'm a little biased, but I think my story is kind of interesting. You know, I'm completely self-made and I managed to become really successful. And I thought, hey, maybe that's something worth celebrating, but no, it always just comes back to the money. I'm just a guy. It's literally just me. There's not a producer out there hiding behind the wall. I <laughs> this year, I said to myself I was gonna be more honest. Um, I'm not gonna s keep smiling to the media. And I knew there was gonna be a price to pay for that. I thought, you know what, it's worth it. I've been successful, I can, I can take it. And here we are. I wanna address the biggest issue first, which I think is the whole uh, guys holding up the sign thing. A lot of people loved the video, and a lot of people didn't. And it's almost like two generations of people arguing whether this is okay or not. But regardless of that, I just wanted to reiterate that my intention was to just to show how stupid the website is and how far you can push it by paying five dollars. I'm sorry for the words that I used, uh, as I know they offended people, and I admit that the joke itself went too far. I do strongly believe that you can joke about anything, but I also believe that there's a there's a right way and not the best way to joke about things. And I love to push boundaries, but I would consider myself a rookie comedian, and I've definitely made mistakes like this before. So basically, they went to the biggest brands that I work with, Disney and YouTube, and they pushed them to the corner and said, "Hey." What do you think about this? Look at this, this is bad. Obviously cornering them, forcing them to sever their ties with me. I fully understand that. And I don't want people to think that, oh, I can I can joke about whatever I want. It, just, it doesn't have to affect me, I'm PewDiePie. I understand that these things have consequences. This, this whole thing is not a post. It was an attack towards me. It was an attack by the media to try and discredit me, to try and de decrease my influence and my economic worth. That's what this was. So what have I done to deserve this? I made some jokes that people people don't like. And you know what? If people don't like my jokes, 
I fully respect that. I fully understand that. I acknowledge that I took things too far, but is there any hate in what I do? No, absolutely not. There's actual hatred out there. There's actual issues. Instead of celebrating my show getting canceled, why don't we focus on that instead? Why don't we focus on some real issues? I'm still here. I'm still making videos. Nice try, Wall Street Journal. Try again, mother Finally, I want to give the... <laughs> the warmest thanks <laughs> to everyone who supported me. <sighs> it's It's been incredible to see. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone in the YouTube community. <laughs> hey, it means, it means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Although the YouTube audience for the most part did forgive the pewds, the media used every last resort to try and kill his career. Hashtag PewDiePie is over party was trending on Twitter multiple times. And a few months later when PewDiePie slipped up and said the N word on stream, it only got worse. Are you a down? Yeah. I see him. I see him. I gotta heal. What the f Nick? Jeez, oh my god, what the f <laughs> Sorry, but what the f Felix deservedly received a ton of backlash, but over time he was able to regain the affection of his fans by staying consistent and growing as a person outside of the spotlight. Eventually, PewDiePie would dabble in a new format for his videos, taking a more television style approach. And that's when we, now nine year olds, no longer bros, were introduced to La Why, You Laugh, You Lose, The PewDiePie Book Club, Meme Review, and so, so many more amazing shows. Outside of the YouTube channel, though, in March of 2018, Felix and Marzia launched Suki, a Japanese inspired clothing brand selling oversized hoodies to Will Berets. And one month later, on the 27th of April, 2018, Felix and Marzia officially announced their engagement. The two had been through it all together, and the fact that this all came out of a DM is amazing. The engagement was a private moment, and rightfully so, but the two also made numerous videos about the subject. I knew I wanted to propose on the trip, because mm -hmm. we were going for 30 days, and I've been thinking about proposing, so now, obviously, if we go to Japan, perfect moment. I went out to the terrace, and the first thing I asked is like, where's your phone? Do I have to take mine? So I was just about to turn back to go get my phone, and you just grabbed my hands and went down on your knee. You make it seem like I forced you. It was a very <laughs> delicate, no, perfect really moment. Sweet. Okay. Just as the broader YouTube audience was warming back up to the pewds, T-Series, another channel on YouTube, was warming up to the number one spot. Channels everywhere began commentating over the possibility of T-Series surpassing PewDiePie, our Swedish meme lord. What if I told you that PewDiePie, the biggest channel on the entire platform, was soon to be dethroned and lose his status as largest channel on the site? Is it El Smosh making a comeback? Is it PewDiePie 2 or PewDiePie 3? No, children. It's something much worse. The entire population of India. Now, T-Series is a YouTube channel. Accordingly, it's a Indian music channel or something. And at this current rate, it is going to pass PewDiePie and subscribers in three months. So bot. <laughs> Why do you laugh at your own jokes? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of smaller channels have this proof. Have you guys ever heard of something called YouTube purges? It's basically to check to see if YouTube subscribers are legitimate. PewDiePie is on track to be overtaken by T-Series later tonight. But the problem is, T-Series is a corporation, it's not a solo creator. The subscriber gap between PewDiePie and T-Series is closing extremely fast. It's over. The YouTube that you once knew is dead. And quickly, Felix jumped on the meme releasing B Lasagna early October of 2018. The song became PewDiePie's anthem against T Series and has now amassed over 215 million views. The PewDiePie channel had recently surpassed 67 million subscribers, and T Series was right behind, growing four times as fast. And that's when Mr. Beast, fellow creator on this here YouTube platform and fellow memester, released a video that would change the history of PewDiePie's channel forever. I bought a bunch of billboards. I uh, do, we got the double billboard. We don't mess around. Went on TV. So grab your phone, go on YouTube, search PewDiePie, and subscribe to it. Mr. Beast started the subscribe to PewDiePie trend, and his video worked like a charm. Keeping PewDiePie afloat way past Social Blade's original prediction of late October 2018. Throughout the next year, the battle continued, and every time the PewDiePie was this close to being overtaken by T-Series, a new creator would come out of the woodworks and support the pews. We saw the likes of Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Durf, Simon Says, Captain Sparkles, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, Davey Fire 4, Mr. Beast again, Mr. Beast again, again, Justin Roberts, Joe Jenkins, Cinematos Ken, and hundreds and hundreds of other micro influencers all doing their part to save PewDiePie. Time and time again, even when T Series did secure the lead, PewDiePie was back on top. You see this number? You see this number? 
this number must always and forever be above this number. But you see the gap? That gap is shrinking. Are you doing your part, okay? I hope you are. If you're not, and this was all for nothing. But alas! I'll play your game, Mr. Pie. Sub to PewDiePie. Yeah. Subscribe to PewDiePie! He once again pivoted his content, cleaning up his act slightly to reach a larger demographic of people, and the nine-year-old army was in full force. In a really weird way, even after all of the controversy, this was peak. PewDiePie. Everything on YouTube around this time was PewDiePie oriented. There was no escape but to just give in and subscribe to PewDiePie to help defeat the evil T-Series Corporation. 70 million, 80 million, 90 million. <laughs> Tragedy struck as a mass shooting was manifested out of the subscribe to PewDiePie meme. Yeah. Such a tragedy that occurred. I was talking with Mr. Beast because he's coming to LA next week and he called me and I thought he, we were scheduling the podcast. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, hey, man, did you hear the news? I was like, what are you talking about? Because I was expecting this call. I just gave him my phone number to schedule. He says, oh, yeah, somebody... He said, oh, this thing just happened, and he said, subscribe to PewDiePie. What started off as a harmless joke helped inspire one horrible, horrible individual to commit such a heinous crime. We live in a sad and messed up world, and because of that, the subscribe to PewDiePie meme was getting a negative undertone. 15 days later though, just as people were beginning to move on, T-Series surpassed PewDiePie for what felt like the definitive time. But that didn't last long though, because Felix dropped congratulations on March 31st, which was a second diss track on T-Series. And the song not only revitalized the nine-year-old morale, but also his number one spot. And as the war began to near 100 million, that became the end game. T series could pass, but only after PewDiePie hit 100 million, not before, after. 91 million, 92, 93, 94, 95. It was April 28th, 2019. It was a Sunday afternoon, and PewDiePie released an unexpected video, ending the subscribe to PewDiePie meme for good, claiming that it should have been ended earlier. Hello. I wanted to talk seriously and honestly for a moment about my thoughts on what's been going on for the past couple months. It started off with people doing really positive and fun things to get attention through subscribe to PewDiePie. But something I learned and I think hopefully it's something people can understand is when you have 90 million people riled up about something, you're bound to get a few degenerates. And it started off with someone spray painting sub to PewDiePie on a World War II memorial. I didn't want hateful acts to overpower all these amazing things that people were doing, all these cool and positive things. But then something happened that I don't think anyone would have predicted. The Christchurch shooter said subscribe to PewDiePie. Put it plainly, I didn't want hate to win, but it's clear to me now the sub subscribe to PewDiePie movement should have ended then. As much as this was a punch the gut for PewDiePie fans, it needed to happen. As the weeks passed, T-Series officially for good secured the lead and became the most subscribed to channel on YouTube and soon after reached 100 million subscribers. Because of this, the hype surrounding PewDiePie began to slow down and he went back to getting only 20,000 a day. 2013 and then I, I peaked in 2014 and then it all just it all just went down. So this is a Wall Street Journal. And then, ba ba da ba ba da ba just been kind of stable for a long time. And then Jesus Christ, T-Series. <laughs> but my favorite part of this graph is when I go, hey guys, let's end the su subscribe PewDiePie meme. Like we shouldn't do this anymore. Okay. <laughs> Skydive graph. <laughs> you know, this is the kind of reports you want to see. A full on economic crash. Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to hit 100 million subscribers in a couple of years. No one cares, Felix. Fine. And to say the least, PewDiePie needed something to spice it up. And then on May 27th, PewDiePie tweeted, Top comment decides my next upload. And then no other than Grande, fellow content creator and memester himself, recommended the PewDiePie play some Minecraft. And to say the least, that's how Gaming Week started. Gaming Week. Say it with me. Gaming Week. We Here it is. Oh. My. God. Although Gaming Week was only meant to last for a, well, a week, it quickly became Gaming Month and maybe Gaming Year. And what feels like the third or fourth time, PewDiePie was back on top once again. This time completely on his own, with no media company chasing him along. Felix's genuine excitement for Minecraft not only surged his channel back into mainstream popularity, but also took part in reviving Minecraft itself. PewDiePie had just surpassed 98 million subscribers and 100 million was closer than ever. 
One by one, the gap continued to get smaller and smaller between PewDiePie and that milestone. 99 million, 99.1, 99.2, 99.3. Day by day, PewDiePie was making major headway on his Minecraft Let's Play series, and around 99.7 million, he ended off his last Minecraft episode with the Ender Dragon cliffhanger. The betrayal of Pee Pee Poo Poo. Pee Poo Poo, be careful. Pee Pee Poo Poo! That same week, on August 19th, 2019, Felix and Marza, who had been officially together for eight consecutive years, tied the knot in marriage. All the pieces were coming together. On August 24th, 2019, PewDiePie reached and surpassed 100 million subscribers. Felix then defeated the Ender Dragon and epically departed for his honeymoon. Felix and Marcia, though I'm sure they had their fair share of ups and downs, stuck it out for the long haul, and I really, really respect that. As an on and off bro, a dedicated nine-year-old, and a hardcore gamer, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for the laughs, the adventures, and showing us that hard work can pay off. Thank you, pudes, for everything. And that's my friends, is the road to 100 million. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the PewDiePie documentary all the way through. Holy crap, you, you sat here for a while. If you guys enjoyed the video, could we maybe get this to PewDiePie? Maybe? <laughs> Is that even possible? I, it's probably impossible, but still, it'd be super cool. This has been something that I've wanted to do for about a year now, and it's so cool for it all to come full circle all at once. I'm sure there's a ton that I miss, but PewDiePie has a very long, complex, and complicated story. I have pages upon pages of notes, and this script itself was 11 pages. So hopefully I got all the big things. I just really wanted to make a short, cohesive, well-presented story, and I think I somewhat succeeded in that. I probably spent about 100 hours on this project, if not more, um, I, but I love the process so much. These videos are so much fun for me to make. Uh, I'm so glad that I forced myself to actually do it because I was procrastinating on doing it because it's such a big project. The two I want to do next are Casey Neistat and Mr. Beast. I think they both have very inspiring stories to tell as well. Also, I wanted more of this documentary to be more of an origin story and less about how much money that he's making because frankly, that's all that everyone else talks about. And as you just watched, PewDiePie's backstory is pretty interesting and I don't know why people don't give it like a, a holy flying leaf. If there's anything that I got wrong about PewDiePie and his origin story, please let me know in the comments below. I care a lot about being factual and correct, so I will take any kind of constructive criticism. And if I messed up on something big, I'll put down a little pinned comment. Anyways, thank you so much everyone for tuning in. It really does mean the world. Make sure to join our Discord server, and also if you want to help support what I do, please go over and check out my Patreon page. It really does help a whole lot. Y'all know the drill. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.